people that have passed before us, they're still here. The people who have passed before us want nothing more than for us to be happy. And when we are sad, it's almost like we're not um, celebrating their life. So I think that it's not, I don't think people are, are choosing to be stuck in in severe depression or sadness, but I think that sometimes people don't realize that there is another option or there is a way out. Hello and welcome to Grief, Gratitude, and the Gray in Between podcast. This podcast is about exploring the grief that occurs at different times in our lives in which we have had major changes and transitions that literally shake us to the core and make us experience grief. I created this podcast for people to feel a little less hopeless and alone in their own grief process as they hear the stories of others who have had similar journeys. I'm Kendra Rinaldi, your host. Now, let's dive right in to today's episode. Welcome to today's episode. I am extremely excited for you guys to get to know the guest I have on today because this woman was very influential in the process of it was a she was a main piece of the puzzle that I was missing in order to kind of get my little booty off the ground and going with the goals that I had in mind and creating even this podcast was part of that one of my goals and so um Stephanie Matos is our guest today she is a world class mindset and success coach for women and I have had the honor of working with her. And it's really interesting because now I'm the one asking the questions and usually in coaching, it's the other way around. So (laughs) Steph, I'm so excited to have you on. (laughs) Hello, Kendra. I am so excited to be here and so happy that I have been a part of your journey. And I'm excited, excited to be on your podcast, girl. So excited. I know it's like how how long it took all the mindset training that I had to get to <laughs> be able to get be on this side of the microphone. Um, it is just in, incredible, right? What happens with um, with ourselves, like when we really get in that right mindset to do the things that we are really meant to be doing. Oh and goodness, uh, totally. and thank you for being part of that journey. So today you are here for a few reasons. We will get into all the mindset and all that kind of stuff, coaching, but. Being that the topic of the podcast is about grief and gratitude, um, I know that we share that aspect of grief in common, and I wanted you to share a little bit of that journey. So, but first off, let's just hear a little about yourself. I know you're a mommy of two fur babies that I adore seeing on Instagram. So, share a little bit with our listeners about you. Yeah. So as Kendra said, I'm a mindset coach specifically for women. I love to work with entrepreneurial women. I love to help people step into their greatness and their power. I also, just like Kendra said, I am a dog mom of two little girls, two little fur babies, and I am a world traveler. So I take my laptop with me all over the world and really work with people from all over the world as well. And I'm just excited to kind of dive into this topic. This is something that Kendra and I have spoken about at length, you know, bef- bef- way before this podcast came to fruition. And okay. it's, it's, a, it's, it's kind of like a full circle moment for me with Kendra in particular that you went out there and did this thing. And now you're helping so many people on this journey. And it's just it really, really awesome to be here today and on this podcast with you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And then what you said is so true, because we in our, in our coaching sessions is what we discovered that grief was kind of my little niche. Right. And so Mm -hmm. discovering what your, am I saying it right? Niche, niche, I never niche, niche, right? I think think you can say either one. (laughs) Either (laughs) one. I'm like, what's the right pronunciation? Um, you know, and that, that was really what, what, yeah, what I had to uh, offer, or not that I don't have any other things to offer, but in that area is something that I felt really comfortable with. And so in the coaching process, that's kind of where I went. And then now with the, with the uh, podcast. So, um, so thank you for being able to help uncover that in the, in the sessions that we had. So thank you. Okay. So Steph, you live in Florida. You've been, were you born and raised here? Tell me a little bit about your 
family and uh, we'll kind of start that journey there. Yeah. So I was actually born in Panama, um, in the country Panama. And uh, my, my mom was born in Puerto Rico. And then we, my dad went into the army. He ended up moving to Puerto Rico. That's how he met my mom. He got drafted into the army. That's a whole nother story. And for that reason, we traveled around a lot and lived in a lot of places. But one of the places that we moved because of his job was Tampa. Um, Tampa has a huge army base here. And particularly, it's it's the home of the Special Operations Command. My dad was a very high level um Green Beret Ranger. He taught Halo School, which is a parachuting school. And so we moved oh. here in particular for him to, to take a job here at the, the Special Operations Command. And that is how we ended up here. And that's how, and I've, I've been here basically ever since. I've kind of moved around a little bit, lived in Orlando for a little bit, lived in New York for a little bit. But for the most part of since I was about nine years old, I've been based in Tampa. In Tampa. But recently, you've also kind of been living off and on also in Panama, although now the conditions are a little bit different. You you can, because like you said, you're a world traveler, you do spend quite a bit of time outside too, right? Normally, yes. <laughs> under under <laughs> average circumstances, <laughs> yes. I spend a lot of time in other countries, spend a lot of time in England, spend a lot of time in Panama, like Kendra said. I was there for almost almost a full year last year, um, you know, traveling all over the place. Hopefully have some travel in my future in the near, you know, maybe next month or so, which is cool. And yeah, so that's that's about it as far as locations and where I'm, I'm, I'm based. Right, right. And then you're one of how many siblings? Two? Um, I have a brother and a sister. Oh, yeah. so it's three. Okay. And what, what number are you? I am the baby. So I'm the youngest. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. But you know, it's interesting because you're so independent. I would have not, I don't know. I don't, are you much younger than them? I actually am. Yeah. So okay. I, I am like yeah, really significantly, um, significantly okay. younger than, than the two of them, which is interesting that you kind of gathered that without having any clue that that was the case. No, I didn't <laughs> know. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's the intuitive part, right? <laughs> yep. stuff that, we, that we tap into. Yeah. I don't know. Cause yeah, you're so, uh, independent. It, I just, I would have either thought, I know you, I know, I knew you were not as an only child, but something made me think you were the oldest because mm -hmm. of that quality of you. But, um, but okay. So it's a big age difference that makes you be so independent. Yeah, um, and I, would, I would also say I also cultivated that in myself. Cause I think, um, you know, when we kind of get into these, these stories of, of grief and, and things like that, we can kind of chat about this, but I think for most of my life, I was extremely dependent, dependent on other people's, um, opinions of me, dependent on other people, re relying on, on them for my success, for my well-being, for all kinds of things. I, I had to cultivate this independent spirit in myself, and I, I was able to do that through mindset techniques. Were you were you dependent, or was it more like the fact also that you wanted their approval? Was it that kind of feeling of wanting approval from your siblings, from your parents, from the people around you, or dependent on them to help you get to where you wanted. What was, can you, it was, uh, it was all so, of that. So okay. I, I did, I think for, for a very long, not, I think I know for the vast majority of my life, I didn't think I could be successful. I didn't think that I could make a lot of money. I didn't think that I could own a business. I didn't think that I was worthy. I didn't think I was good enough. You know, I didn't think I was smart enough, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And this was something that over time I was able to recalibrate and reset my mindset with many of the tips, tricks, strategies that I use with my own coaching clients now. And that, like I said, it was, it's definitely something that I had to grow out of and I had to cultivate in myself. And so when you said, who, who did I need approval from? It was all of the above. It was, you know, strangers on the street. It was people in my family. It was friends. It was whoever. I thought that I wasn't worthy or good enough unless somebody told me I was, right? Mm -hmm. So then let, take us on that journey of then what kind of started happening. So let's, let's dive into your father's passing because he's yeah. the first one that passed away. So Correct. of the two main people, I mean, there's been other people in your life per se, are we going to, we're going to particularly talk about your dad and, and your mom today. 
correct? Yeah. So there, there's really, you know, this, this whole podcast is around grief and, and in general, the be- in general. <laughs> and yes. Yeah. And, and the beauty that can really come from it, you know, and mm-hmm. I have two significant people in my life that I've lost and very similarly to, to Kendra, it's just that our, our, we have one person that's the same and then one person that's different. So I lost my father when I was 13 years old. And then I also lost my mother. But the the interesting thing is that my experience between both of these um, sources of grief were very, very extremely different. So when I was 13 years old, I mean, I think most people listening to this can understand, I had very, very few tools to deal with a tragedy like that. And especially one that was so significant in my life where um, he he passed away in a military training accident. So I, I had mentioned previously on here that he was a, a very high level parachute specialist. So he taught Halo School. He taught people how to jump with weapons. He was just very, 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 very well versed in that. I, mean, not, and I was going to say it, James Bond or Mission Impossible ish totally. kind of like. Yeah, he was actually in the original Delta. Totally. Yeah, exactly. Um, So he was in the original Delta Force. So Delta Force is something that a lot of people have heard of before. It used to be a secret thing that was a secret mission thing. He was on the original uh, team of people who did that. He was there when the hostages in Iran, this was in the 80s, I believe, they, there was people, uh, Americans were hostage in Iran and a Black mm-hmm. Hawk went down and all kinds of stuff. He was there for all of these things. And so I think because he was such a heroic figure in my life and such a like, like you said, like a James Bond type person, mm-hmm. when he left one day and never came home, it really, 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 really affected me tremendously. And from, I went into a big, deep, dark hole is what happened when I was young. And that hole just kind of, it was almost like I I went into victimhood. I went into the victimhood of, of the loss and the tragedy. And that really came with me all the way up until my thirties when I, because, you know, when, when you have a massive tragedy, tragedy like that, and you don't have the right coping mechanisms, you develop some very unhealthy coping strategies, you know, whether that's drugs or alcohol or gambling or whatever it is, it's different for every person. Yeah. food. food. Oh, totally. Yeah. And actually that was one of mine. I, I had gained about 60 pounds at one point in my life. And, you know, so it's, it's, it's funny that you say that. I totally, I forget about that because it's so far from where I am now that I forget that that happened, but that also did happen. And so, but once, once you start to develop these coping mecha- mechanisms, if you don't do something to throw a wrench in them, then they just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then neurology in the brain gets deeper and deeper. And that's essentially what happened to me. So I was very, very lucky. And when I was in my thirties, so I, I went to college, got my master's. I was, um, I got my master's in exercise physiology. And when I got out of college, I was able to start a job as a researcher. And so I researched for many different people in the health and wellness field. I was also a ghostwriter. And it's just funny because, when you know, when you were saying like, you're so independent and all this stuff, yeah. when I was doing the researching and writing, one of the reasons why that job worked so well for me was because I could hide behind my laptop and you can't really get more hidden than a ghostwriter. You know what I mean? It was like, I, <laughs> now I, I'm curious to know when you ghost, <laughs> are, are you the ghostwriter for uh, what, like mainly articles and stuff that you would write? Right? Like, is yeah. it mainly going for articles? Okay. Totally. Yeah. So I would write tons and tons and tons of articles for many different people. Like, you know, obviously I can't really say who they are, but yeah, you many different high level. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So many different people, high level people, specifically in the health and wellness space. Um, and that kind of stuff. So okay. what, but what happened as a result of that is that I did some research for a woman who was an expert on the brain and specifically around stress in the brain. And when I started to do the research for her, for her New York Times bestselling book, that is when I realized, oh my goodness, I'm really, really unhappy. And there's actually a lot of things that I can do about this. There's a lot of control that I have over my brain. There's a lot that I can do when it comes to, you know, the science-based aspect of these things. 
And so once I learned these strategies from the the literature, from the research, from the black and white thinker that I was at the time, Mm -hmm. I was able to get myself to a certain place um, with, you know, with regards to, you know, let me put it this way. So when I was in the depths of my anxiety and depression and all of that kind of stuff, I, at one point couldn't even leave my house. Like that's how bad the anxiety was. I couldn't leave my house. I was clinically depressed. Uh, I was, uh, on many different medications for, you know, cause doctors will a hundred percent throw medication at people, when they have deep seated issues and it seems like therapy just isn't working. I was on probably five different medications at one point. It took a lot of dedication and work on my point to wean myself off of all of those medications to get myself to the place where I am today. And that all came from mindset training and from the science of the brain. Now, which when, is something you're super passionate about now, right? Like yes. you, you link that science behind the mindset. So yeah, go ahead. I don't want to make you lose your train of thought, but I know that all of the neuro pathways, all that kind of stuff is something you're totally very passionate about. So go ahead, continue. I, I it's, you're correct. You're totally right. And, um, and I want to welcome you to please interject anytime. Um, <laughs> I don't want to, <laughs> yes, but I don't want to, I don't want you to lose your train of thought either. So I'm yeah. like, I just know that, that if you want to touch on that afterwards too, uh, that would be awesome because that is, so, I mean, well, or people could just go and follow you and get a coaching session with you. So either one, but I do, but that part of the neurology, I think is just so interesting. And I know it plays a big part of your recovery of being able to break away from that. So within that, the, that training that you did researching for this woman, you find, found out about these tools, you started implementing them, started weeding yourself out mm-hmm. of these different medications you had been on. And then tell us then what yeah and so I got I got myself to a certain place right and when you're in a deep dark depression and you've been this way for many many years when you are you have such horrible anxiety that you you can't even leave your house once you get past that and once you're able to leave your house and all of this stuff it feels like you've made it like it feels like woohoo yeah like I've really done great things but really there's many 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 rungs to the ladder there's many 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 different levels to success and healing right and so you know after I got to a certain place uh un- unfortunately my mom got diagnosed with cancer and my my mom was a very 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 important person in my life she has since passed she i think she passed away about 5 years ago now but she had been diagnosed about 5 years prior to that uh with ovarian cancer and once this happened that's when all of my fears all of the fears of oh no when my dad died i basically lost myself for about 20 years. Right. And Mm -hmm. I had assumed if I lost my mom, because up until this point, my mom was the most healthy person I knew. Her father lived to be 101. Her mom lived to be 98. So my grandmother and grandfather very like uh, that, that side of my family has a very long, long lived Mm -hmm. life. And so we just assumed that she was going to be alive forever right? That was just what we had in our minds. And she also was completely, completely, completely healthy besides this cancer. So when she got diagnosed, I really thought, oh no, if something happens to her, I'm not going to be able to handle it. I'm not going to be able to handle this again. I'm not going to be able to pull myself out of this again. I don't know what I'm going to do, right? And so for many years while she was going through chemotherapy and um, the the treatment for, she had stage 3C ovarian cancer when she was diagnosed, it ended up metastasizing and um, causing a lot of issues for her, a lot of pain, a lot of, it's a really horrible chemo treatment for ovarian cancer. It's very rigorous and tough and a lot of side effects, all of that kind of stuff. And I moved myself back to Tampa from Orlando to be here. That's with her. what I was going to ask. That's yep. what I was going to ask if you were in the same city or not in that moment. So you, you weren't, when she got diagnosed, you moved over there to be close to her and you were there with her through her entire, uh, journey. Correct. Yeah. Well, I I was, uh, so when she first got diagnosed, I was traveling back and forth because I had a job mm-hmm. at that time at a hospital 
and it was, you know, a quote unquote good job and all of that stuff. But about a year into it, I realized that I just needed to pack up my stuff and come back here because I needed to be closer to her and all of that stuff. So that is what I did. Exactly that. I I packed up everything. But what I did was I lost myself in her illness. Mm. I I Mm. basically completely let go of my own health and healing, my own mindset transformation, you know, all of this kind of stuff. Luckily, I have a really amazing partner named Andy Murphy, who he himself is a master NLP expert. So that's neuro linguistic programming. He himself is a master uh, mindset coach and success coach in for himself and his his clients. And I really had a lot of support from him, but you know, obviously he could only do so much. And what ended up happening is that my mom lost her life to this cancer. And this was, this is where things changed. So this is how, how things were very, very different from the first experience of that deep tragedy, tragic grief that I experienced with my dad's death and with my mom's death is that it, it it completely, it's almost like it broke me wide open, but in the best way. So rather than taking me down this deep, dark hole and don't get me wrong. I mean, there was about a three month period where I couldn't really function very well, you know, right after, after she passed away. And I remember you know, I had- even just you, you kind of, we weren't connect. We were only following each other on social media then. And I remember mm-hmm. like when she passed away, I didn't see any posts from you for uh, on social media for a, a good chunk of time. Oh, right. Yeah. At least I, those three I, months, I, at least that you're mentioning. Yes. A hundred percent. It was, it was three months or, or maybe even more that I completely mm-hmm. took myself away. But instead of, uh, when my dad passed away, what I did was I took myself away from the world, but I went into a dark hole. And when I did this with my mom, I took myself out of the world, but it was to rediscover who I was and what I was meant to do on this earth. So it was a very, very therapeutic, very cathartic, um, amazing thing. I was able to utilize her death as the catalyst for me to become who I am today, to be able to help the women that I help, to be able to become successful and have success in my business, in my life, be a happy person. And so rather than letting her death again, kind of suck me down this tragic victimhood you know, place, I chose to become a victor. So I wanted to be the victor of my life rather than the victim. And so that's, you know, and I really wanted to share this story with the listeners because when we lose someone who is very, very important to us in our lives, we have a choice whether it breaks us or whether it catapults us into another level of success for ourselves, into another level of happiness, um, into tapping into what they would want for us and the happiness that they would want to see us having. And I really believe she's right here with me right now. You know, she's probably like, Ooh, say this, say that. Ooh, remember to say this. Um, you know, and she's like, you know, you go girl. She wouldn't want me to be crying and sad and living a sad life, you know? And so this is the cool thing is that we really do have the have have the option and the choice to let these things fuel us in a positive way than in an, a, a not so positive unhealthy way. Mm. Wow, it's like what a difference of that experience from when you were thirteen with experiencing your dad's death, and then of course some years later. Uh, as an adult and all the learning. Now, you could have probably reacted the same way had you not been through all the growth that you had got, you know, gone through from 13 to then in your 30s when your mom passed away. Because um, there's a lot of us that kind of just could stay. Not not that everybody just stays. I mean, you're, you're a coach. Do you think that people sometimes just choose to stay the same and not use those opportunities to grow in life. Yeah. And you know what I would say is that I think a lot of people don't realize that there is another way, right? Because Mm -hmm. the, the initial reaction and the initial feeling is tremendous grief. And what can happen is that it can become a vicious cycle where it it starts to almost, I, I call it sucking you down a hole. Um, where it's very dark, you can't see the way out, you don't understand there's a way out. And sometimes you don't realize there's a way out until you ask for help, 
right? Mm, so yes. I really didn't have the the help that I needed. Not not I I went to many therapists. I went to many different things. One of the things about me that's very different than other coaches is that I have a very um, spiritual component. And so, you know, divine universe manifesting, vibrational energy, you know, all of that stuff is very, very important to me. Crystals, all kinds of woo-woo stuff on top of the science, right? So I I have a very science-minded brain and I love stats and I love data and I love the proof, but I also know that there is something much bigger than us that is unseen and un- um, undescribable, undefinable. And really what I needed at the time was a combination of those two things. And it just simply doesn't exist in the typical therapy um, route. Mm -hmm. And I think that therapy is awesome. Therapy really got me very far, but it only got me to a certain point. So when I was um, in Orlando, I found an amazing therapist and she was able to get me to a certain point. But just as I was saying, there are many, many rungs to this ladder. So she was able to get me out of my house. She was able to get me, Mm -hmm. you know, back to functioning as a more productive human being on earth, right? But there was more meant for me. And that's where I had to tap into this other aspect of myself, which is this more spiritual side of things. And I think that that's really what expanded me further was understanding that there are, you know, these people that have passed before us, they're still here. The people who have passed before us want nothing more than for us to be happy. And when we are sad, it's almost like we're not um, celebrating their life. So I think that it's not, I don't think people are, are choosing to be stuck in an, in severe depression or sadness, but I think that sometimes people don't realize that there is another option or there is a way out. Do you think also the fact that sometimes I was just thinking this while I was washing like my, <laughs> washing the dishes before this call, uh-huh. I was thinking like sometimes like it just gets comfortable like an old t-shirt. It's it's that kind of feeling of like it's I'm just even though it's already has some holes and it may not be like something you want to necessarily wear out. Like it still is that comfort in that discomfort mm-hmm. per se, uh, because yes. it's something known and it's like, I'm just gonna stay wearing this old t-shirt because this is what I've known for. This is the t-shirt I graduated with from high school and I'm going to wear it every single day and I'm going to wear it every night for bed because this is comfortable. You know what I mean? That type of thing. That's and precisely I wonder- what happened to me. <laughs> um, exactly uh-huh. that with, with, um, Because my dad's death was the catalyst Mm -hmm. for me to develop some really unhealthy habits that became like that comfortable shirt Mm -hmm. that they, they, it's almost like I had my identity wrapped up in In sadness. Yes. In sadness, in Mm -hmm. victimhood, in Mm -hmm. what was me and why me. And it's, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing to, it it just is what it is. But the Mm -hmm. thing is, is that we have we have to understand that we have a choice to get out of it. It's not always easy, but it is possible. And it honestly is the best way for us to honor our loved ones who have passed is to live a full and amazing life and to become a great success and to have great happiness and to smile and to celebrate their, their lives and who they were, you know? And, but yes, I a hundred percent agree with you that it it's um, and I think that happens over time where it's, Mm -hmm. so the initial, I think the initial shock of losing someone, if you aren't equipped with the strategies, which most people aren't, you know, equipped with the strategies of re, re, rerouting your, your neurological pathway, so to speak. So mm-hmm. our neurology is very much on autopilot and it runs like, uh, it, it runs like almost like a high speed bullet train and our thoughts are on a loop. So our, we, we have anywhere between, there's many different stats behind this, but we have anywhere between 40,000 to 80,000 thoughts, everything, every single day. That's like a huge, big, fat book, like a novel, a huge novel that we are thinking in our mind every single day. And most of those, and again, the stats kind of run, you know, there's a, there's a bit of a, a gap here, but between anywhere between 70 to 90% of those thoughts are negative. And then on top of that, those thoughts are on loop. 
So it's not that you just think a negative thought once, you're thinking it over and over and over and over and over again. And so this is why it's critically important that we get really clear on whatever it is that is running through our mind. So for me, like one of the things that was happening with me, um, with my mom is that I would think, oh my gosh, I didn't spend enough time with her. I didn't do this. I wasn't there when she did this. I wasn't there for that. I blah, blah, blah. But it's like, wait a second, but there was a million times that I was there. There's a million things that I did have gratitude for. There was a million things that I did do this. And then on top of that, right, the better, the better, even better thought is that she does not care now what happened when she was on earth. This, this is something that I, I have really, you know, just kind of been intuitively guided to understand through her, her passing is that everything, everything, everything gets wiped clean. It's like you have a clean slate with this person because they're no longer in the physical form. They're on a different dimension at a different plane where anything that happened on earth and anything that maybe was a negative thing gets completely wiped clean. And all they are is a pure love, light being, and all they want is for you to be happy. They could care less everything that you didn't do. They could care less everything that went wrong. They could care less when you yelled at them or treated them badly. All of that gets wiped clean. But when you are in a negative place or when somebody first passes away, it's very, very easy to accidentally get stuck in that. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's easy yeah, to get that, stuck there. That makes so much. You know what you were, what you were saying there too I, about the clean slate and the not, there's no attachment to what happened in this world because the ego is removed in that aspect. Yes. When right, there's no ego uh-huh. component and all those things that we are talking about that we still have this ego component because we're still phys- you know we're spiritual beings living a physical life. Therefore, we still have the ego that is kind of the one thinking all these things but then once the soul is not in relationship with a body anymore therefore the ego is no longer there so all those things that we're spending our time looping in our head over and over again (laughs) Mm -hmm. as you said there's no that is such a that's so true the the other I kept on like thinking as you're talking about those pathways and about changing the course I just I feel like it's like that um being in a jungle and that you you go in a jungle and you normally just follow whatever little pathway somebody else has already kind of built and you just follow that trail. Right. But in this case, like there's, you got to kind of get out your machete, your machete Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. and start kind of track, you know, chipping away, creating a new, a new path. (laughs) Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And that's going this way. Yeah. Well, and you know, it's so funny that you're saying that is that I, I run a group coaching call in, um, in a, a, a large group co- coaching program. And mm-hmm. I just explained neurological pathways the exact same way. You have two <laughs> paths. Yes. You have two paths. One is like a high speed bullet train, right? Let's pretend like it's going left, right? So this one is the neurological pathway that has been formed over time. And it is it's and so let's even say when you first lose someone right it's it gets connected to the emotion right so our 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 emotional state is very high our stress hormone lo- levels go very high and um being in certain places also anchor in certain neurologies. Okay. So I I won't go too deep into this to get too sciencey, but anyways, (laughs) the more intense the feeling or the emotion and the more intense the experience, the, the bigger and deeper and stronger, the neurology um, gets the track gets Mm. placed. Right. So Mm -hmm. even though a lot of neurology gets, gets done over time. So for example, if I've been thinking I'm not good enough since I was 10 years old and now I'm 41, well, guess what? That's going to be a pretty thick neurology. But the other thing that gets really thick is anytime the emotional state or the emotional impact and in addition to the hormone levels gets, um, it's kind of like a chemical cocktail that lays down a very strong track. So Mm -hmm. as soon as somebody passes away, you have a high-speed bullet train almost immediately that gets kind of anchored towards doom, gloom, death, and destruction. That's what I call it, kind of like the dark negative path. And what we have to understand is that the positive, the light, the love lives to the right. So let's say the doom, gloom, death, and destruction path is going left. We have this other path that's right. But just like um, Kendra just said, 
it it is a big jungle. It's got weeds. It's got vines. It's there's no path at all. So what we have to do is take our machete and hack away and hack away and hack away and hack away. And how we do that is by throwing a wrench in the loop that's running on the subconscious level. So that thought process that's like, oh my gosh, they're gone. Oh my gosh, they're gone. Oh my gosh, they're gone. How am I ever going to survive? How am I ever going to survive? How am I going to ever survive? It's stop, 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 stop. You are strong. Mm. I am worthy. I am wonderful. I am worthy of happiness. My loved one would want me to be happy. My loved one would want me to be healthy. So it's it's repeating phrases that are the opposite yeah, of what is running on yeah. autopilot. And every time you repeat those phrases or derail that neurology and do the opposite, right? So you have to disobey the negative inner bully. So I call that the negative inner bully. And what you want to do is deny and disobey the negative inner bully. So for me, when I was, you know, stuck on my couch and I could not leave my house, the way that I defied that negative inner bully was by leaving the house, was by, a, you know, sh forcing myself to just set my feet in the grass. My dogs helped me a lot with that because they have to go out, right? Oh, so yeah. it was like, okay, I'm going to walk them a little bit that further today and a little bit further. Yeah. But yeah. every single time you do that, that's you taking that machete and chopping down the, the jungle that's living there. And then soon you'll have a little path then it becomes a dirt lane, then it becomes a, a little one lane highway, then it becomes a two lane highway, then it's a three lane highway. And then soon you have a high speed bullet train that's moving towards your success and happiness and greatness. And simultaneously, while this one's getting built with all of the, you know, every single time you stop that neurology and stop that neurology, the other one is starting to um, crumble. So little grassy, grassy things, you know, are, are, are um, growing through. Yeah. And <laughs> then it the crumbles. The not passing and... through there anymore. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> correct. 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 So then that becomes the jungle and the other one becomes the path. Correct. Oh, so awesome. Oh, that image is so perfect. It is. So perfect. Thank mm -hmm. you. All that explanation is just so clear. Now, I'm curious, you mentioned about just all your spirituality component too, and just how that played such a big part as an adult. I'm curious about your upbringing and in terms of spirituality and beliefs about death, and then just how you even just kind of shifted and kept on investigating yourself for what was true to you. Uh, would you dive into that a little bit, please? Yeah, sure. So I am Latin. So my, my, both my parents are Latin. So uh, that basically means almost always you're Catholic, Roman Catholic. Um, and that's, so that's how I was raised. But I did not resonate with all of the teachings of that, that faith and religion. I did not resonate with certain values, certain beliefs. So my introduction into um, faith and religion was not the best because I knew there was more. I knew there was a higher power and I always believed that there was more, but what I didn't like was the way that it was being taught presented to me to and you. presented, yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so when you only really see one way of things, you kind of just have a bad taste in your mouth for all forms of religion. So for a while I thought, Ugh, I just don't like religion. I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm, I'm not into that. I don't pray. I don't do this. I don't do that. You know, and that kind of thing. And even though I always knew, like I said, there, there was more to it. And at that time, I didn't even know that I could define what that meant for me. But I remember even at a young age, I thought, I feel like I could have church like in nature if I wanted, you know, I feel like I could have church anywhere if I wanted. I don't think I have to go to church to have, you know, to have my version of church. Right. Um, but again, I never really put a lot of time or effort or energy or thought into it much at all. It really wasn't until, oh my gosh, I would say maybe like, I would say six or seven years ago that, I, I didn't really have a spiritual awakening, but I started to, and it's kind of funny, you know how they have that saying when the, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Yeah. So yeah. I kind of well, had this. this is then, mm -hmm, go ahead. Sorry. To, this is during your mom's chemo then around the time that she was in her yeah. treatment. Around? It was, okay. it was, yep. She was, she was okay. in chemo at the time. This was when I was in Tampa. I had, I had already moved back and okay. I started to watch YouTube videos. So like, 
Gabrielle Bernstein, a lady named Teal Swan. Um, I, I even started watching Marie Forleo at that time. And so YouTube was really a way for me to start opening my eyes to the possibilities. I also really started to go deep into uh, books and audio books and all of this kind of stuff. And what I realized is that even from a very, very, very young child, I was very sensitive to energy. I was sensitive to the energy that was happening around me. I was sensitive to other people's energy. I was sensitive if somebody was upset. I would get upset if somebody was sad. I would get sad. And I realized that a lot of the reason why I was feeling in such um, trauma and victimhood was because I couldn't separate my own feelings from others. I didn't realize it was happening. I didn't realize that that was something that I had access to or that I could possibly do. And so once I did that, it was almost like my my intuitive gifts sort of got got blown wide open. And I I have intuitive gifts around, you know, connecting to source, helping my clients through things. My all of my coaching sessions are completely intuitively guided. I don't have a particular curriculum that I follow because each and every person really needs something very individualized, mm -hmm. but that all comes to me intuitively. And then what I do is I pull from the science and pull from from the things that people can benefit from but based around what their souls are are ready for and what they need. So I, I would say my my journey into spirituality kind of came all at once. It was like a, a flood, like the floodgates opened of, <laughs> wow, this is possible. Wow, that's possible. But really, when I think about it, my whole entire life, I was very, very, very sensitive to um, the energies of the universe and all of that kind of stuff. And I also sort of also knew that I could create my own reality um, for, for a few things, but it was, it's funny because I could create them in certain ways, but I didn't realize I could create them in all ways. So I didn't realize I could be happy. I didn't realize that I could have a healthy mindset. I didn't realize all of these things, although that's part of manifesting too. Yes. No, that's, just, that is so good because yeah, you, you definitely are an intuitive coach. I mean, in our sessions, there'd be things that you'd say and I'm like, Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, that in my family, da, 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 da. And, and, and you're like, well, I'm getting this kind of feeling of like, you know, and then you just express it or, um, or any time that you, if you follow Steph and please do, if you're listening to this, um, you're going to follow her for sure. I know already, but, um, one is when you do your card readings and then you say, ah, you know, this may resonate with you and you do it in your Instagram stories. And there's so many times that whatever you've kind of pulled out when the, the <laughs> cards that you read your angel cards or any of those that resonate with what I'm going through in that moment. The uh, other thing too, is your affirmations. You, you mentioned a little bit then about throwing that wrench, right. And you were kind of saying some of those affirmations. So you have an amazing affirmation track. Can, can we add that to the link below for people to be able to um, download and hear your, your affirmations? Yeah, hundred so percent. Yeah. I, I have one on my website right now. It's a hundred percent for free. It is a very powerful affirmations track and essentially affirmation tracks, uh, audio tracks, like the one that's on my website that you can download for free and Kendra can put the link in, in the description box. Basically what they do is they help to override what's, what's happening on the subconscious level. And a lot of times, like we just mentioned before, you know, I told you all those stats about the thoughts and how they're mostly negative and how they're on loop. And not only are they on, on loop, you guys, they happen day after day after day after day after day. And here's the truth is that a belief is just a thought you continue to think. So mm -hmm. if you repeat that again. A belief, a belief, very, very important, important thing to understand. A belief is simply a thought you continue to think. So if you can replace the thought with something more powerful, you can have more powerful beliefs about yourself more empowering beliefs about yourself, uh, more positive beliefs about yourself rather than what most people have and a lot of people have. And, and part of this is because our human brain has been set and geared to focus on the negative. And this is part partly because we come from, you know, cavemen and our archaic ancestors, basically, it was very, very, very important for them to be keen to and aware of all of the negative lions and tigers and bear and bears and feast and famine that could kill them, right? And 
what it takes many, many thousands of years to evolve and our human mm-hmm. minds and our human brains have simply not had enough time to uh, evolve past this archaic way of thinking. So since we no longer, you know, d- depending on where you live in the world, but especially in these mm-hmm. more Western right. civilizations, we really don't have to worry about these things. I mean, we literally can sit on our butts all day and get everything delivered to us by Amazon, you know? So mm-hmm. we're not really worried about feast and famine. We can get our groceries delivered to us anytime. We have readily available food and water. We do not have to worry about wild animals coming and, and eating us most of the time but our brain is still looking for them. It's still looking for these things. And so what happens is it creates things in the mind to worry about, and it creates things in the mind to focus on. And then we also get filled with negative input through the shows that we watch, through the media, through social media, through our you know parents, through We're our teachers. The lions. We're feeding it. We're feeding it. And yes, feeding it. and you have to feed it the right things. And so mm-hmm. the this positive affirmations track is is a great way to override some of the negativity that is going getting is entering into the mind. It's impossible to completely eliminate negativity from your life, but you can certainly do a lot to eliminate it. I would be very careful with the shows that you watch. I would eliminate the news. I would be very careful on social media. It's just so easy to accidentally get sucked down the wrong the wrong tunnel when it comes mm-hmm. to these things. And this positive affirmation track, this one in particular also has an alpha wave in it. And an alpha wave is It's a brainwave frequency that helps you to tap into your subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is actually part of a bit of the brain that you have. So we have two parts of the brain, conscious and unconscious. And the unconscious is where habits live, is where 95% of what you do every single day live, is where your beliefs live, is where your repetitive thoughts live. And so that alpha wave beat actually helps you to get into the right brainwave frequency so that these uh, positive thoughts thoughts and positive statements can actually get in sync and settle into the subconscious mind. Mm, mm. That is just gold. People, you (laughs) just got a free session (laughs) just by listening to this podcast. (laughs) Now you better go and tap on the links that are going to be below because this is just the beginning. Just the understanding is the beginning. Then is the work, which is the 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 bigger you know the bigger machete we need for that and having those tools and it's just so amazing because even though you you had the oh did you just yawn Evie I have Evie right here next to me she just <laughs> yawned right here so I'm like oh yours are quiet yours are just are they on your lap or are they're they are passed out they are oh, one's okay. in front of me one's yeah. next to me and they are both just asleep well she was asleep and then just came over here and I'm petting her as I'm talking to you. But um, what I was going to say is that you you were able to discover all these tools, implement them on yourself. Then now you help others, you know, be able to discover that in themselves. And it's just such a beautiful gift that had you not gone through some of the things in your life, do you think, okay, let me just rephrase that. Do you think you would be where you are right now had you not gone through hard things in your life? And the answer, the short answer is no. <laughs> and mm-hmm. and this yeah. is something that I had to come to, to grips with, with. It's funny when, when Kendra and I were discussing, like, because I saw in her a, a really big gift to help people through grief. And she had a, she, she has a really great gift to help people through the stages of grief. And she also feels very comfortable discussing these challenging topics with people. And we were talking about these different, you know, uh, labels for things. It's like from, mm-hmm. from grace, from grief to gratitude, from grief yeah. to grace, you know, from all of this stuff. And yeah, so one of the things that I, I was able to move from through this was from grief to deep, deep gratitude, deep, deep mm-hmm. gratitude for the, the losses that I face, you know, and it's, it, it, it sounds very strange to people to think like, 
I'm so grateful that I was, I experienced the death of my father. I'm so grateful that I experienced the death of my mom. I'm so grateful that I couldn't leave my house. I'm so grateful that it took me 10 years to turn my life around. You know, it sounds, it sounds very, you know, weird, but the truth is, is that I would not have the tools that I have today to help others if I wouldn't have been through these things. And I wouldn't be the person that I am today if I didn't have these, you know, life challenges that I went through, you know? And so I, I also really am grateful for my mom's passing because that was the fuel under my butt to really understand that I only have one life to live. And it's, it's, I, you know, none of us are guaranteed a tomorrow and it's time to take action. Now I was one of those people that was like, maybe one day, someday I'll do this or, you know, and I, I, cause I had inspir you know, inspirations to stand on stages and, and, you know, help women and all of this stuff, but I was way too scared to take action. I had a very big lack, lack of self-confidence with that. And once she passed away, it was like, boom, you best move girl. <laughs> yeah. Time to take exactly. action. Mm -hmm. Especially because these are two very, like what you said, your dad was a superhero, basically. Yeah. Let's just like to say it in the, you know, whatever, in those kind of terms, that then you're 13, the person that you think is invincible passes away. And then your mom, who came from a genetic, you know, family with genetics of living long time, gets sick and passes away. So that right there was that aha, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I really do not have tomorrow guaranteed. Like there is a why, why, and why am I waiting? Like, and yep. what am I, and what am I waiting for? And why, you know? It's oh like, yeah. It's all of those things. I mean, and, and, you know, we talked about how I disappeared, like I disappeared off social media. I disappeared from, you know, basically I just, I really went internal. So I went inside and that is a lot of things that I was journaling. It was like, well, what is holding you back from this? What is it that you really want? What is, what is it that, if you had no fear, you would do today, you know, and these yeah. were the things that I was doing. And once I got clear on that, my mom gave me the strength, my mom's legacy in life gave me the strength to go, okay, you want to st speak on stages, you want to help women, you want to do these things, you're petrified and think you are horrible on camera and horrible live and horrible on podcasts and all of this stuff. So what's story, one thing? Story, 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 yes, story. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> it, all the, all, all things that were never real or true. But I had a, I had a, um, a slight willingness to understand that because a belief is just a thought I continue to think, right? Mm -hmm. I understood that to be true. So what I understood too was that I could make a new reality for myself, but I had to take action while I was still scared and when I wasn't ready and do it messy. And so what I did was I started to hop on Facebook Live. And that is how I started my business was I would just force myself petrified scared. I would be petrified for about five days prior to the Facebook live. Right. And I would like take and notes nobody, and you know, nobody all this would stuff. see that now. Nobody, <laughs> would, nobody would believe it. If they, if they see you, how comfortable you are. Exactly. So and so that, that just goes to show you too, how, how your brain can be a liar. So for about, I would say a good 10 years of my life, I told, I had a story that was, I am not good on camera. I am not good with people. I need to be behind the scenes. I cannot be in front of the scenes. I'm not good with people. I'm not good on camera. I mean, it was in every iteration wow. of that is what I told myself. And then one day I realized, wait a second, if you really do, right? Because when you're journaling in a journal, right? It's a very safe place to be honest with what you really want, right? And when I saw on paper what I really wanted, which was really at the end of the day to help women live a life they truly love in business and in life in all aspects, right? Well, guess what? You can't do that hiding. You can't mm. do that unless you're willing to tell people, this is what I do and this is what I want to do and this is how I help people. And I understood that. And what I also understood was that that was me, the, the real version of me, not the fear-based version of me, not the version of me that didn't think they could do it. This was the version that was pure the egoless self, right? We yes, were just talking about yes. the ego. And yeah. so what I decided right then and there was, 
however possible that I could take a step towards this new version of me, I needed to do it. And the way that I thought that was possible and the the easiest way was through these Facebook lives, right? And these Facebook lives, man, it's kind of crazy how they became a catalyst for so many opportunities in my life, so many big opportunities um, in my life. And they all started from, you know, starting messy, not being prepared, not feeling ready, not feeling good enough, but doing it anyway, and letting my mom really be the, um, the fuel under my butt, so to speak, to move towards a better life for myself and a better mindset uh-huh. for myself. Oh, so many, so many things that you've shared that I'm like, I just want to keep on asking more <laughs> questions because it's just so amazing. I'll, I'll ask you uh, one, one other thing and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. If you had to um, give anybody any particular like, or actually, let me, let's just take that back. What would you say now as the Stephanie now to that 13 year old girl that experienced the death of dad? of her dad. Oh, goodness. What would you say to Stephanie? Man, I think I would just give her a big, huge hug and let her know that everything was going to be okay. I would also teach her the power of the subconscious mind and the power of thoughts because at that time, and I think maybe even a lot of people listening to this, um, it's, it's almost like unheard of that your beliefs are something that you can change or that lack of self-confidence is, is, not something that, or sorry, confidence is not something that everybody is born with. You can cultivate it. Um, even let's say sales, right? So sales is something that comes along with being an entrepreneur and a successful person. Not everybody is born a salesperson, but you can learn these skills. Not everybody is burnt, born, you know, this optimistic, happy person, but you can cultivate these things. And so I think those are the things that I would teach her is just, you know, give her a big hug, let her know everything is going to be okay, but also teach her. And also the other thing that I would teach her is understanding vibrational energy, understanding that you can be really affected by other people's negative energy and positive energy and teaching her how to bubble herself up and block out other people's energies and all of that kind of stuff. So let's just say it would be a long conversation. I would have, it would be a very long conversation and there would be a lot, a lot, a lot of learning and probably a whiteboard and notepads and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but you know, that is just- is so important because especially like I have you know preteen well one teenager and one preteen and even just today you know just I even as a mom had to it's as if you know when when I'm asking you that like what would you say to your 13 year old self is also like uh like myself as a parent and maybe other listeners as parents even just how we have to think of how we speak to our kids how we're also helping them reprogram their way of thinking too, so that they don't end up carrying these beliefs through their life and have, you know, all the negative thoughts running through their head 24 seven too. So, um, Mm -hmm. so anyway, could relate. Oh, there she goes again. Can you hear her? Can you hear Evie? No. Oh, okay. 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 She's (laughs) like, um, so anyway, thank you again so much, Steph. Is there anything else that you wanted to say before we close off before? Yeah, uh, I, you know, I would just like to tell any anybody listening to this that no matter where you are in life, no matter how deep down a hole you think you are in life, no matter how, you know, big a tragedy that you suffered, you can live a ha- happy life. And as a matter of fact, you know, this is about grief, right? So if you have lost a loved one, I would just really encourage you to flip your mindset around it and think, how would they want me to live? What would they want me to do? What can I do with the life that I have remaining on this earth? Um, you know, with the human hands that I still have available to me to make their life on, on earth, you know, to honor their life and make their life on earth worthwhile and allow yourself to step into the greatness and the power and the beauty that you have access to all of the time. Sometimes it feels far away, but I promise you it's closer than you think it is. Uh, thank you so much, Steph. Thank you. That was just so beautiful. I was like getting chills there in that moment. Thank you so much. And then 
We will put everything below, but if you want to just say a little quick tagline of how they can find you, but I will put the links uh, below, but what's the quick, what's the easiest way for somebody to reach you? Yeah, of course. So um, like Kendra said, all of my links will be in the description box. However, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm very, very active on stories. It's at Stephanie Matos 1111. That's at Which Stephanie is a Matos. Which number. <laughs> yes. That's back to the numbers. <laughs> 1111, yes. And yes. then. <laughs> um, you can also go to my website, which is raiseyourvibetoday.com. And on my website, I have a blog. I have um, also, you can contact me on my website if you'd like to have a one on one session and just kind of find out what coaching with me is like. Find out if coaching is a good fit for you. There is, it's 100% for free. So I do complimentary uh, introductory sessions just to, just to check things out and meet each other. And I love to meet new people. So anyways, those are, those are the best ways. And then also on my website, which will be a separate link, you can download that free audio track. The, 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 the comp it's, it's all about confidence, clarity, and abundance. This, this affirmation track. Perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you once again, big, big virtual hug on this end. And I am just so grateful for you. And again, thank you for being part of my life journey and the journey of this podcast as well, Steph. I'm so you grateful. You are so welcome. It is an absolute pleasure. And thank you for inviting me. Thank you, love. Bye. Thank you again so much for choosing to listen today. I hope that you can take away a few nuggets from today's episode that can bring you comfort in your times of grief. If so, it would mean so much to me if you would rate and comment on this episode. And if you feel inspired in some way to share it with someone who may need to hear this, please do so. Also, if you or someone you know has a story of grief and gratitude that should be shared so that others can be inspired as well, please reach out to me. And thanks once again for tuning in to Grief, Gratitude, and the Gray in Between podcast. Have a beautiful day.